check this out. It's a NAND gate built from scratch using nothing but transistors and other electrical components on a breadboard. In this video, you're going to see how to make this happen. In this video, we'll be building NAND gates from scratch. So what's on the menu for today? First of all, if you need a background on transistors, see my previous video on NOT gates. We'll start with a real life demo of a working NAND circuit with transistors. We will show the materials that we will need to build this, the truth table for the behavior of the NAND gate, the logical diagram in Logisim, which is where we can play around with the gate interactively and see what the inputs look like when we flip bits, the circuit diagram, which we'll use CircuitJS for to build a resistor transistor logic version of the circuit, some alternatives that are built into CircuitJS for RTL, TTL, TTL, and MOS and CMOS, and how to implement the circuit on a breadboard yourself. But why bother building this gate anyway? Who cares? Well, at PageKey, we're trying to take back tech. What's the big idea? The whole world around us from our smartphones, our laptops, cars, planes, logistics systems used to put things on shelves in grocery stores, it's all run by tech, developed by big companies, right? It's not your average Joe. It is lots of people coming together to develop these technologies, which is fine. It's a tall stack of abstraction that is very complicated and few, if any people understand it from top to bottom. We rely on these huge companies to maintain that stack of abstraction for us. It's expensive for them, but they pass that expense on to us, surely. So maybe we can trust them to have our best interests in mind, maybe, but in case that they don't, it's always good to have a plan. So if we learn more about tech, they have less leverage on us. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. So anyway, what materials do we need to get this done? We need two NPN type instead of PMP, bipolar junction transistors, 2N2222 is good stuff, but really probably any NPN type will work for this. These guys are right here. We need two one kilo ohm resistors, which are right here. And then one 220 ohm resistor, which is right here. I used an Arduino for five volt and ground pins. It's definitely good to have. Same with a breadboard, which might come with your Arduino. Maybe you can find a different way to do it, but I liked using the Arduino for this. Two breadboard buttons. Those look like this. One LED, that guy's right here. And a bunch of jumper wires, which are here. And you don't have to match the color or the size. Just use anything that works for your circuit. Now let's look at a real life demo of the working NAND circuit. Here's the working NAND circuit. If we plug it in, we get a bright light. Both are zero. If we do one, or the other, it's still a one output. And if we do both, they turn off. So from the demo, you got a feel for the behavior of the NAND circuit, but here's the truth table that tells it exhaustively. Based on your inputs A and B, if they are both zero, the output is a one. If either of them is a one, you also have one output. It's the only time you're ever outputting a zero is if both are one, so not and. So if A and B are true, then the output is false. Any other case, the output is true. So let's throw this into Logisim so we can see how you can interact with gates digitally to get a feel before you build the circuit. So if you open up Logisim Evolution, we can jump right in, add an input bit and a second input bit, and then add an output bit, go into gates, grab a NAND gate, connect these fellows up. And just like that, you have something you can play with to see the behavior of this gate. Now let's look at the circuit diagram built in circuit JS, resistor transistor logic. I'll start with the correct circuit because that's probably all you care about. So open up circuit JS, here is the link. And if you want to follow along, you can import from text and I'll put this on GitHub so you can paste it in. But if we paste in the correct circuit, you see it right here. We have this 220 resistor, 1K, 1K, all that stuff. The voltage is roughly the same, 1.82. If both are open or if only one is open, 1.82, we switch it. 1.835, close enough that it looks the same. Note that these are both NPN transistors, and especially note this 220 resistor is less than these 1K resistors over here. That'll be important. So part two, my mistake. The first time that I built this, I did it wrong. So I wanna share that mistake with you and explain why it was wrong. Well, here's my mistake circuit, the one that was close, but not quite it. Do you notice the difference? This guy right here. I thought, let me just use the same resistor everywhere because it would be simpler. But it turns out that while this almost functions correctly, as you can see, it's a different brightness, but uh, basically right. Uh, one thing that I noticed when I built this in real life that I didn't notice when I saw this in the sim was, look at this. These are both zeros, but it's quite a large voltage difference to the point where you can see it flashing, which is not good. So 1.6 and 1.7 volts is enough to have a visual difference and I found that fixing that was as simple as changing this to a smaller resistor, perhaps so that this is the 
path of least resistance. I'm not sure exactly. I would appreciate anyone with an EE background. Tell me if you know, because I don't know for sure, but I just know that making sure that this resistor was smaller than these two fixed the problem. Now let's look at the CircuitJS built-in NAND gates that are alternative implementations in different ways. So open CircuitJS, we'll go to logic families and you can see RTL NAND is right here. Looks similar to the one that we just built, but it has multiple inputs. You can click the high or the low to mess around with it. Obviously only low if all of them are high. Next, go to DTL or diode transistor logic, select the NAND gate and you can see the same deal here, but it's using diodes right here and one transistor. Next, select TTL NAND, and with three transistors, we can have three inputs. I'm sorry, two inputs. NMOS, not sure what to make of this, but it exists. And finally, CMOS, which is the modern best way of doing things, from my understanding. So how do we translate our simulated circuit JS circuit over here to a real life circuit that we can actually touch and feel? Well, first of all, you'll notice that the five volt pin on the Arduino goes to the top row here for the plus, the positive, and then the bottom, or I'm sorry, the ground goes to the minus rail. So that starts us off. But if we go from five volts, we have two paths that we can go down. So we'll take one at a time. Let's start with this one that goes to the resistor. So we're going from positive through this 220 resistor. And from there, we have two paths that we have to follow. The first goes to the LED to ground. You can see that connection right here, all the way back to ground. The second one goes to the collector of the top transistor. You can see that connection right here. So I'll mark in white that we've covered this entire path here. Now the second piece, we have two switches. So here's the input to the first switch, here's the second switch. That's very simple. It's going from the positive rail into the switch here. And actually this kind of connects across so that that entire first row there is all connected because this button connects across like that. And then the output of the button is over here. So this entire row is the output of that button. So you see that for both buttons, you just connect the positive rail to the top of the button and that all gets energized with positive. And then on the other side of the button, we have a resistor and then it goes into the base of the transistor. And this happens for both of them. You can see here that the output of the first button goes into the middle or base pin of that transistor. And similarly on this same row, oops, let me use a different color. On this output row of the button, you have a resistor going over into the base of the other transistor. So that would be green in this diagram. So with that, we've covered most of this diagram. All that's left is this little bit here. So the emitter of the first transistor connects to the collector of the second one. That's this little orange guy here. And then from the collector of the second one, it goes straight to ground. That's this rather ugly jumper I had to do straight up in the air to get back to ground. And that's all there is to it. That's the whole circuit. So that's it. That's all I had for this video. Here's a quick recap of what we talked about. We saw a working NAND circuit. We reviewed the logical diagram and truth table as well as the materials. And we created the circuit design and implemented it in real life on a breadboard. If you like this video, consider subscribing to Take Back Tech. We always rebuild things from scratch, self-host things, and many more interesting tech topics. So if you're into that, PageKey is the place for you. See you for the next one. Thanks.